Welcome to a Senior Portrait Retouch in Photoshop. I'm Lee Veris, your host for the step-by-step -step tutorial. This tutorial will examine the Spot Healing Tool, a hue saturation color adjustment for uneven skin tones, and we'll spend a bit of time doing dodging and burning to even out skin tones, and we'll do some shading and shaping with a curve adjustment layer plus layer mask. And finally, we'll use a subtle skin smoothing technique and add back some skin texture. OK, so let's get started. OK, here we are in Photoshop, and we have our uh, image open up here. And uh, we obviously need to do some, uh, some work uh, to even out, uh, take out the blemishes. Uh, so let's, let's start. We'll zoom in to 100% here, and I'm going to make an empty layer. This will be my spotting layer. And uh, we'll get the, the healing brush tool here. This is the spot healing tool, first selection here. And uh, basically, the approach here is just to use content aware, sample all layers, because we have a, an empty layer that we're, we're spotting into, and try to use the smallest brush you can to attack the little blemishes. We just take out anything that. Um, we want to remove, if it's a little bit bigger area, you can kind of paint over it. Um, so you can see I just go through, and uh, sometimes you, you have to kind of go over it a couple of times to get the texture in there that you like. Um, again, if, uh, if it seems like it's getting too smooth, I don't think we're going to have that issue with this particular image, but uh, if you notice that things look a little too smooth, you can try create texture. And uh, again, sometimes proximity match may end up being a better uh, texture for you in this particular area. So we'll just keep going along through here. And uh, you know, sometimes you have to kind of hit it a couple of times before you get something that you like. And uh, we're, we're not going to be able to completely even out the color of the skin, that's going to come in the next step. So just want to kind of get rid of all that rough texture, uh, as much of those little blemishes as we can. Um, right now I'm working at 100%, and sometimes you want to actually zoom in even more. Here I'm, I'm at 200%, and I'm just going to go for these little tiny little kind of, I guess that's sort of puddles of makeup here. Um, really, you get in this close, and this is not stuff that will show up in a print. But since we can, we will take care of them. OK, and I'm not going to force you to watch all of this, but I'm just going to go through here and really just remove all the little spots that uh, are distracting. OK, now that we've uh, done our spotting, we're going to take a look at this. And we still have, we have some sort of uneven skin color, so a little blotchiness here that's uh, the result of the of the uh, sort of red acne uh, and using the spot healing tool we can't completely eliminate that and uh, uh, it, it the more we retouch the more uh, this kind of smoothing is going to happen we start losing some of the original texture of the skin so uh, right now we're going to do a little bit of a hue saturation shift and I, I do notice as I'm looking at the numbers up here for CMYK that her skin is in in a lot of areas it's really on the pink side and there's very few areas on here that aren't actually too pink however her hand over here is fine so the color of her hand which partially is because it's reflecting the yellow of her uh, blonde hair but the color of her hand is is much better than the sort of overall red color of her face so we're gonna just 
back out a little bit here. Now we're going to add a hue saturation adjustment that will start to even out the skin tone. Um, so we'll get a hue saturation adjustment layer here. And now I'm going to target the specific range of colors that I want to shift. So they're going to be reds. So we're going to target the reds. And as soon as I select reds from that drop down menu, I get these uh, eyedropper tools. So I'll take the leftmost eyedropper and I'm looking at the numbers. I'm going to try and find a red color in, in those one of the blemishes here that is especially uh, especially magenta. So again, looking up in the upper right corner of the info panel, I see here that magenta is at 50 and yellow is at 42. Uh, and that's the area right underneath my cursor. Uh, that is just way too pink. We need to have a little more yellow than we have magenta for a good skin tone. Uh, and this is also a color of kind of patchy blemish on her cheek. So we're going to sample that up. I'll just click on it. And I invite you now to watch the, the gradient display at the bottom of the hue saturation adjustment panel. Uh, and it's going to move just a little bit. So you notice how that moved just a little bit. And that has centered uh, the targeted area right on that color. Uh, now we're going to subtract an, a good color skin here. So here we have a, a skin color that is about 10% higher. Again, looking in the upper right corner of the info panel there. Uh, that's a good skin color. We don't want to shift that at all. So I'm going to subtract that from the selection. And now just to make sure that uh, I know which colors are fully targeted, I'm going to do a ridiculous hue shift here. And we'll shift this all the way to the left. And you can see the cyan areas are the ones that are fully targeted. And I'm actually going to trim down uh, this selection here in the, in the bottom of the display. This gradient, this dark area represents the fully targeted color, and the light gray areas represent how it's ramping off. So the cyan is the fully targeted area, and it sort of ramps off, and it's having very little effect on the hand. Uh, but I want to make this targeted area just a little tighter to correspond more to the blotches that I remember seeing there. So something like this, I think, is, is going to be closer to what we want to shift. And then I'll trim in from the right side here. I'll just push this in a little bit until it comes off of her hair and a good part of her hand, which we don't want to shift. And so now you kind of see that the blue color is, is roughly corresponding to the red blotchiness uh, in her cheeks. OK, so now we just bring this back to zero. and while I'm looking at this, I'm going to be shifting it to the right, which is in the direction that you want the skin color to move down here. If we want it to be yellower, so we've got to move that slider to the right. And OK, I'm getting I'm getting there. I'm getting to where I want to be with this. Uh, just a, a little more yellow than than magenta, maybe go a little bit more. OK, so that's really helped a lot to remove some of that uh, blotchiness. Now, the red blotchiness was also a little bit darker than the surrounding skin. So I'm going to attempt to kind of equalize it just a little bit. This is very hard. Uh, we're going to lighten it up just a little bit. If you go too far, it just ashes out, you know, it takes the color out of the out of the skin. So just a little bit to help uh, make the patchy areas a little bit lighter. OK, and so now we'll We'll, uh, uh, we'll examine how this was before the adjustment. I'll just click the little eye on and off. So it's very red. And now I've taken the red out, and we've gone a long way to hiding those, those patches. Um, I think overall, the skin has gotten a, maybe a little less saturated. Uh, we could try adding just a little more saturation back to kind of you know, put some more color into the skin. Uh, just checking my numbers. I just want to make sure that I'm, I have more yellow than magenta everywhere. And so far, we're, we're pretty good here. Now, I can't use this 
adjustment globally. It's affecting the lips here, and it's also affecting the color of her, her shirt. So we're going to actually uh, paint it in or mask it so that it's only affecting the, the face, as we don't need it on the hand either. Okay, so I'm going to close the panel for now. We'll look at the layer. The layer, the adjustment layer always comes in with a layer mask. So right now I'm going to invert that layer mask so that it, it goes black. So Command or Control I will do the inversion. And it's also, you could go up here, Image, Adjustments, Invert. Okay, so we can do that. And now we're hiding the adjustment. So now you don't see the adjustment at all. And now we just take a, a paintbrush tool and we're going to paint with white into the black layer mask over the areas that we want to see that adjustment in. So I'm painting at 100% opacity just to paint in that adjustment. You can see the skin uh, gets yellows up and that pink cast is taken away. And that, that helps to hide the kind of red blotchiness a bit. Okay, and we'll go down on her neck here too. Although, frankly, the neck now to me looks a little green, and it's it's not bad technically in the numbers, but perhaps uh, we won't brush it in over the neck. We'll let that stay a little redder. Okay, so now just to make sure that we don't have any holes in our layer mask. I'm going to isolate the layer mask. I'll solo it by option or alt clicking on the layer mask thumbnail. And I can see just a few, oops, I don't want to paint with black. Uh, we'll paint with white here. Just a few areas where the coverage wasn't quite even. Okay, and we can also, I'll show you another trick for this. I'll go back to seeing the full color image just by option or alt clicking again on that layer mask. And another way we can visualize that mask is to go to the channels panel and then turn on uh, the visibility of the layer mask. And we can kind of see now uh, how it relates to the face. And I might want to you know, carefully paint in so that I'm not covering up the lips, but I'm coming right up to it. And you know, also maybe a little bit down here on the chin. So I'm just getting a little more detail in the mask. And I have a nice soft edge there. We can come up under the eyes a bit more. So you can see how this, this helps to um, show you how the, the layer mask is relating to the image. Okay, I'm going to leave the area under her eyes a little more red and uh, just kind of feather into this a little bit. Anything that you've, if you think you've gone too far, I'm going to leave a little bit of redness into the shadows here, just a little bit. So now I've reduced the opacity, I'm going to paint back. Uh, with black just to hide it a little bit from the shadow side so that the shadows maintain just a little hint of that redness rather than uh, warming up uh, too much. If it's, if it's too yellow in the shadow, sometimes it looks kind of green. So I'm just wanting to keep it out of the shadows a little bit like I did on the neck down here. Okay, so now we'll turn that off. We'll go back to our normal view here. And so now you can see if I turn this on and off, it's only affecting her face. Okay. All right, so we're getting there. We're getting there. But uh, next, so this is uh, the hue saturation uh, adjustment to take the red out. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is do some subtle dodging and burning to help kind of even out. It's still a little sort of blotchy looking. Uh, and we can do little subtle things to kind of knock back the, the bags under the eyes just a little bit. And uh, 
So we're going to make a dodge and burn layer. So I'm going to start by making an empty layer. This is going to be our dodge and burn. And we'll change the apply mode from normal to, um, to soft light. Now the trick here is if, if I paint into this layer with white or black, I can lighten if I paint with white or darken if I paint with black the underlying image. And it, it's, it works well if you're, if you're not going to try and go too far with it. And when we're not, we want to preserve as much of the actual real texture of the skin. And we just want to kind of knock back some of these wrinkles. And um, so the trick here is to use a brush at very low opacity. So I'll, I'll, and I'll just hit 05 to get 5% opacity. Um, I don't use flow to change the, uh, the opacity. I'd rather use the, the opacity itself, OK? And uh, to do this, really, you have to, this is very detailed kind of work, so it's really much more helpful to have a Wacom tablet. So we're going to switch to white, and uh, I'm going to zoom in now. We'll start with kind of more detail. So I get a nice little brush, and I'm just brushing in very subtly, 5% opacity with the white. And I'm just lightening that little wrinkle just a little bit. Now, goal is not to remove it. It's just to make it seem less deep. Okay. And it should almost look like you're not doing anything. You shouldn't really, it's, it's happening so slowly that you're just not going to be aware of it. Let me just turn that on and off. You see how that really is lightening up? And now uh, I, I'm kind of working back a little more macro, you know, to, to sort of lighten that, that bag, that shape of the bag there. Kind of knocking this back just a little bit. Again, kind of toggle it on and off to check your, your progress here. And these little dark spots, you know, instead of getting in there and, you know, using the spot healing tool, I'm, I'm going to try and just sort of lighten them up. I want to preserve some of this because it's actual skin texture. But now here's an area that's a little patchy. And I'm just going to kind of get in there and just work, work the dodge and burn just a little bit to try and even that out. And and for this to work properly, you have to kind of zoom in and out and try to identify areas uh, that you want to work on. And then very subtly, again, I'm painting with just 5%. And you can go take this down sometimes. You go to 2% because uh, you don't want it to progress too fast. And this is just something that you know you're going to have to spend some time, You know, go to your happy place. And, Put some music on and, you know, just kind of work, work the, uh, the, the micro and the macro. Come back out. Try to decide, is this area, maybe this area needs a little kind of lightning just to kind of e even out the, and I'm using a very light touch with a Wacom tablet here too. It also helps. to kind of very subtly get in there and just kind of try to even out the patches as much as you can. I mean, don't take out shading on the face, but, you know, these little kind of patches here, we're just going to knock it back a little bit. Again, the goal is not to eliminate anything. It's just to sort of subtly even out the texture of the skin a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to put a dark uh, uh, color underneath it so you can see what what that uh, dodging and burning is doing. So I'm going to just, this is just a temporary, just so that you can see uh, what what's happening. And uh, let's, let's
let's lighten this up just a bit here. Let's see. Okay, now you can see see the very subtle kind of shading that, that I'm doing in, in this dodge and burn layer. That's that's it. That's what it looks like. Uh, and I'll just turn this off. So you can see how very subtly I'm kind of evening out the, the, the patches. And we're just going to go through and do this uh, with the rest of the face. And again, I'm not going to force you to watch me do this. Okay, now I'm 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 pretty much done uh, with my my dodging and burning, and let's kind of turn that on and off. You can kind of see, just subtly trying to equalize the patches so that they just sort of disappear, and, and maybe just knock back some of the deeper wrinkles. But I'm I'm tr not trying to attack the texture of the skin so much, I'm trying to keep that uh, the way it was. Um, okay, so. Again, yeah, turn it on and off just a little bit. You can kind of see what, what that's doing. Okay, so uh, now I think I'm going to work on the eyes. Uh, before the next step, which will be uh, a little more shaping on the face, I'm just going to work on these eyes. So we'll make an empty layer here, and uh, this is uh, this will be uh, the pupils. And really what I'm going to do here is, is hide this reflector that's, that's showing up in the bottom here uh, and make uh, the eyes all dark all the way around. Okay, so I just take a paintbrush here, and this time I'm going to paint at 100% opacity. I'm just going to sample the color uh, of the actual pupil, and we're just going to paint out to hide that reflector. Okay, now I'm going to do just, I've got a little spot there, uh, so I'm going to use the clone stamp tool just to kind of smooth out that curve a little bit there. Okay, that's good. All right, now uh, I'm going to make another empty layer, and this is going to be for the uh, catch light. Um, and I'm, I'm actually going to enhance what's already there, and I'm just going to do that with an overlay layer here. So I'm turning that layer to overlay mode, and I'm going to get uh, a white. This, usually it's not a good idea to hammer this at 100%, so I'm going to paint with white, but I'm going to do it at about 30% here. Just paint into this area with white to brighten it up. Oops, and it better, better be a, a paintbrush here. So like 30% uh, with white using the paintbrush, not the clone stamp tool. And just kind of ping that a little bit, make it a little stronger. And now I'm also going to add a subtle lightning and possibly we'll add a little color to this. So I'm going to uh, edit that, that color. So instead of just pure white, we're going to make this sort of a, a light, a light blue. So just very pale, a pale blue color. And uh, again, maybe we'll do 20% opacity. And I'm just going to opposite where the catch light is. I'm just going to add a little subtle highlight in there. Just, and it, it's putting just a touch of blue color in there because her eyes are blue. Okay, and let's turn that on and off. You see what that's doing. It's really opening up those eyes. Uh, I could also possibly uh, add a little lightness to the eyeball. Um, let me just back out. I'm not, I'm not really sure that's quite necessary. Okay, so this, these two layers are the eyes. I'm going to Group, put them in a group. So I select both layers and I select new group from layers and we'll call that eyes. Okay, so I'm now I'm thinking that I want to actually do some more macro shading uh, to kind of maybe slim her face down a little bit, uh, slim down the nose a little bit. Uh, and we want to be fairly subtle with this. Um, and I've, I've found that sometimes when you darken areas, they can, 
they can get kind of ashy looking if you use a dodge and burn layer. So we're going to actually use a, a curves adjustment. So we're going to make a curves adjustment. And uh, this is just, it's just going to be a darkening kind of thing. So I'll pull this down. And I, I, I go more than I think I'm ever going to use for my shading. And now we're going to invert that again to black. So command or control I, now that's black. And now I'm going to paint with uh, yeah, maybe maybe 20% uh, opacity, uh, very soft. Uh, just kind of add in a little shading on the sides of the face here, just kind of kind of sort of slim her her face. She's got this kind of round face, and I want to give the impression that it's uh, it's not quite so so round. Maybe just a little bit of kind of subtle shading on the sides. And uh, this is another little trick often works really good for uh, simulating eye shadow, uh, which is going to make her eyes kind of seem bigger than they are. Uh, I generally try to avoid um, doing any kind of liquify, uh, which is, is, it's possible to do that to open up the eyes, make them a little bit bigger. Uh, but sometimes it's kind of tricky because you can, you can make the person not look like themselves. Um, and okay, so now I'm going to reduce the opacity. I just want to add just a little bit of shading on the side of the nose. So the nose has this really wide look here, so just a subtle, subtle little bit of shading. Let's, let's see what we're doing here. Just very, very subtly kind of slimming down the face just a little bit. Um, I might add a little bit of dodging there. Let's not use blue. I'm going to switch to white in the foreground. I'll go back to my dodge and burn layer and uh, very subtly here i'm just going to add in just a little bit of highlight to make that actually make the nose look a little slimmer yeah just just kind of straightens the nose out makes it look a little slimmer and uh Getting pretty close. Getting pretty close. I see a little area here that I might, I might want to knock back. Um, try to decide whether I want to do that with a, with a curve, perhaps. Very slowly, kind of add that into that area. All right. So we're pretty close. It's it's almost impossible to completely remove, you know, the texture uh, of and the patchiness just using dodging and burning. It is if you spend enough time, you, it's amazing what you can do, and uh, it's always good to sort of, you know, toggle in and out. And because these things are in a layer, I can always revise what I've done here so far. I'm going to throw away this temporary visualization layer here just so I don't get confused. And so this is uh, my shading, I'm trying to label my layers. Uh, now I'm going to show you a, a technique which is really only appropriate if used very judiciously. Um, I, it, it, get, it tends to get overused quite a bit. Uh, and we're going to, it's sort of an older uh, skin smoothing technique uh, that I covered pretty extensively in my skin book. And, uh, Unfortunately, I had to kind of show it in a somewhat exaggerated manner so that it was understandable in the book illustrations. Uh, but here I'm going to show you how I actually use this. So we're going to we're create we're going to create a subtle skin smoothing that's going to help us even out what's re, what remains of the sort of little blotchy uh, colored skin. And her skin actually is, is fairly smooth. She doesn't have a lot of natural texture in it. Uh, so we may add something just to kind of 
even out the texture. Um, so I'm, I'm looking here at 50% opacity or 50% magnification. And I'm going to make a merged copy of all these retouch layers on the top. The shortcut to doing that is to hold down the Option or Alt key and then select Merge Visible from this flyaway menu. And there's my copy. This is identical to everything underneath it. And now we're going to do, uh, we're going to run a filter. Um, and whenever we run a filter on a layer, it's, I, I think it's usually a good idea to turn the layer into a smart object. So we're going to go Layer, Smart Objects, Convert to Smart Object. And that will allow us, uh, uh, make it easier for us to revise uh, the filter effect later if it, if it seems like we need it. So I'm going to select Convert to Smart Object. And then when we run the filters on this, there'll be Smart Filters. So Filter, Blur, and I'm going to use Surface Blur. OK, Surface Blur. And what I'm looking for is a nice soft blur that, that kind of smooths out the skin color. And then we'll, we'll pick a threshold uh, that brings back the sharp edges of the major edge transitions, OK? So uh, along these edges, I don't want the blur to extend into the dark areas or have the dark areas come into the blurred areas. I, so I think a threshold a level of 22 here is pretty good. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking to kind of eliminate all the texture in the skin. OK. So now, of course, we're not going to use this layer like this. Uh, but first, uh, before we start uh, thinking about how we're going to apply it, I'm going to add back a sort of artificial skin texture. And um, I'll show you how I do this. We're going to uh, and we'll group that texture with this layer. So I'm going to make a, a new layer. But before I click on the new layer icon down here, I'm going to hold down the Option or the Alt key so that when I click on it, I get new layer options. OK, so um, this is going to be our texture. Uh, and we're going to use the previous layer to create a clipping mask. And I'm going to change the mode from normal to um, overlay. OK. and. Uh, fill with overlay neutral color, 50% gray. OK, so now I say OK. And we can see that this layer has come in and it's grouped with this blur layer. And I'll, I'll just call that smooth. OK, so targeting that gray overlay layer, which has no effect. It's 50% gray, so the it's neutral for overlay calculations, not having an effect. But we're going to add a noise to that layer. And this is going to be the start of our, uh, our skin texture. OK, before I run this filter, let's change it into a smart object to be consistent. So I'm going to go layer, smart object, convert to a smart object. OK, and then we're going to run a, a noise filter. So I go filter, noise, add noise. Now, what I want to do here is I want to add uh, enough noise. I'm going to actually blur the noise next. So I want to make sure that it's it's visible noise. Uh, and when it gets blurred, it'll actually get a little bit bigger. Uh, so you know, maybe uh, 18. Let's try for this. Um, and now I'm going to run another filter. I'm going to blur it, Gaussian blur. And we'll try, you know, a little, little over a pixel blur here. OK. Now, the next part is we're going to run a stylize and emboss. OK, so uh, I'm, I'm, I don't want to have this emboss too heavy. So uh, I'm, I'm leaving the height here. Let's see, around four pixels is probably plenty. And look in here and decide if that's kind of looking like the texture I'm, I'm after. And I'm still not done. Uh, 
I can't, I usually like to do a fade on this. So uh, I'm going to undo this. That's why I can't use a smart object here. Um, so I'm going to undo that filter and I'm going to rasterize this layer. Uh, so I'm going to rasterize the smart object. So now it's back into just being uh, uh, a layer that's been uh, noised and blurred. And now I'm going to run uh, the emboss. And I'm going to fade the emboss. I find that this, uh, this technique here helps to make this look more like actual skin tuck color. So I'm going to fade to lighten. So now the emboss uh, is a sort of, it just, it changes the character of the emboss. And I think this looks a bit more like an actual skin texture. Uh, now we're not quite done because typically uh, now this texture looks a little too heavy in the shadows. So I'm going to use blending options here uh, to, to change how this is blended in with the uh, underlying layer. So we're going to select blending options. And what I want this to do is not be applied so heavily into the shadows. So I'm going to be moving this slider for the underlying image to represent the darks in the image. Uh, but first I'm going to split it. So option alt and then split the layer, the slider apart. I'll bring this one up to 128. That's where, uh, that's where it changes from highlights to shadows. So I want the, the, the texture to ramp off in the shadows. And we can toggle this on and off. You can look down in here and see how it's ramping off. And in, I may want to make it less obvious in the shadows. So I move the, the, the other part of the slider just a little bit. So we take off the texture in the shadows. OK, now. Uh, at the moment, we'll leave this at this intensity, and uh, we're not going to use this blur at anywhere near 100%. Okay, usually I, I get it down around 30% or so, and we can see it's a very subtle effect at that intensity, but it does sort of soften uh, the blotchiness of the skin a bit. So now. I'm going to hide that, that whole thing, because I only want to paint it in over the, the areas that I want to smooth out. So hold down the Option, click on that layer mask. And now I've hidden it. And now, of course, we get the paintbrush. And we're going to paint in. Uh, and I'll go ahead and paint at 100% opacity here. But we're going to paint in uh, over the areas of the face that we want to smooth out. So. Now remember, this is only being applied at, at basically one third strength, so it's it's not having a huge effect, but it does kind of iron out the skin uh, modeling, you know, the sort of blotchiness a bit. And uh, we're still looking at two thirds of this showing up. The reason I'm out here at, at uh, a 50% opacity is because I feel that gives me a better sense of what that is going to look like. And I just want a very subtle hint of it in there. I mean, zoom in a bit, just kind of apply it just a little bit over the eyes here. Smooth that out just a bit. Toggle it on and off. This is very subtle. You don't. You can. You can add it a little. Little more opacity if if you really feel like it. It needs it. But uh, I suggest that you just keep it very very subtle because otherwise it, it becomes kind of obvious and it looks like you know. See, it just looks like that. You know, uh, which we can't really have. If you do use more, uh, you know, heavier opacity to get a little more smoothing. You may have to adjust uh, the opacity of this texture. 
you know, because the texture can seem a little over heavy handed. So we might knock that back a little bit. Um, but I still think, you know, this is maybe still a bit much. We're going to be down in here or so. Okay. Um, one last thing I want to do, and that is to add some vignetting, uh, which in this type of portrait is really going to help. So we're going to make an empty layer at the top, and we will paint into this layer with black using the gradient tool and uh, a low opacity. And very important, you want to pick uh, this second gradient style, which is foreground to transparent. So the gradient, we can paint it in multiple times. You'll see how this works. So I black in my foreground, and it's going to fade off to transparent in this layer. This is my uh, vignette. And uh, this is the way it works. We, we drag from the edge and um, sort of drag from the edge. I can drag down over, over the image because I can use a, a mask later on and drag out from the corners kind of. This is sort of like uh, the traditional uh, dodging and burning uh, technique that you would have used uh, under an enlarger. Okay. And the trick is to do it very gradually uh, and change your your angle constantly so that uh, you, you, you can kind of gradually build up a, a, a more complex uh, kind of uh, vignette. And you can see it develop gradually instead of kind of hammering it all at once. And usually what I what I what I do is I, I kind of go a little heavy with it and then I'll I'll back off. So now that I've got it in place, I'll I'll reduce the opacity a bit so it's not quite so obvious. And then because I've gone over the top of the, the face and, and I've sort of killed the highlight on the hair, I'm gonna use a layer mask uh, and we'll brush in with black, uh, get a nice soft brush here and brush in to bring back the highlights on her on the top of her face make sure she, there's no vignetting going over her face okay so there you have it we're pretty much done let's take a look at where we've come All right so now we're here uh one last thing that we can do and and again this is sort of uh you got to be really careful with this uh, in this case, uh, you know, I, I, she has a sort of wide face, and it's a, got a, this sort of very round uh, face. And I may want to mitigate that just a little bit. This is really kind of tricky, though, so um, be very careful with this. Um, I'm going to merge another copy at the top. So holding down Option or Alt, select Merge Visible. And it puts a copy at the top. And... Uh, this is, uh, we're going to squish this just a little bit. Um, so I really be careful with this because it's so easy to overdo it. So I'm going to do a command or control T to get my free transform dialog up. And now what I want to do is bring it, narrow the image out just a little bit, a tiny little bit. And if you hold down the option or alt when you do this, it'll it'll transform around that center. So we're going to bring the sides in just a little bit, just like that. That's enough. Now, if you don't overdo this, see there's, she's looking kind of wide, much more attractive. Everybody wants to be a little more slender. And uh, it's not going to be obvious as long as they don't see the original result like that. It's not going to be obvious. They'll just uh, think they look pretty good that day. Um, so that's that's the idea here. And uh, you can kind of see now going, I'm going to go back and, and look at the, the original again. 
right? That's where we are. So uh, it's it's sort of a glamorizing retouch here, uh, but zooming in again, uh, there is still that sense of texture that was there in her skin. We can still see, uh, so it doesn't look like super um, retouched, although it certainly has been idealized quite a bit. And it's appropriate for certain types of portraits. Uh, obviously, don't want to do this uh, if you want to, if you're doing a, a character study and you want them to really look like who they are. Uh, but to give them an idealized version of themselves, this this is uh, one way, certainly, of doing it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look at some of these techniques for portrait retouching. Uh, you can find out much more advanced information on my website and my blog. And I have a YouTube channel with lots of video tutorials. And you can follow me on Twitter to find out about my various classes and workshops around the country. Thanks for watching.